Hi, I want to try out a new segment called EEV Smoke to see if anyone likes this or not. I think it might be fun. Where I briefly show you just for a couple of minutes, maybe every week or something like that, a photo or maybe occasionally a video or something like that of a component where the magic smoke has escaped. So I thought I'd give it a go. So it could be fun and maybe educational. So week I asked on Twitter for people to uh, send stuff in. It is the uh, an Infineon SP SD P blah, 06 S60. It's a um, silicon carbide shot key diode. It's the world's first 600 volt shot key diode and it's in a TO220 uh, package but it's in a weird ass dash 2 dash 2 package which uh, chops out the middle pin there to get the voltage spacing required between these two pins here and then it just shorts out the others because the center pin goes off to the uh, tab here to pin one a revolutionary semiconductor material silicon carbide woohoo and it's a fantastic looking diode and let's see what happened to this poor thing so the first cab off the rank is uh joseph smith 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 thank you very much joseph for sending this in look at it Wah, 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 wah. I love this. Look, it is basically, um, it, it, it's it like imploded. It's like, <laughs> it's like something has like, uh, like slammed into it physically and concaved the, uh, the actual uh, package there, but no, it's it's just basically um, heated up so much that it melted it away. You might even be able to, maybe that's like the, the charred remains of the dye inside there, but oh goodness, and that is an absolute classic. Look at that thing. It's uh, mounted next to uh, two big uh, MOSFETs. They're um, Infineon ones as well. They're, they're your uh, cool MOS ones. Once again, revolutionary high voltage technology, 650 volts. Thank you very much. Hence the, um, hence the large uh, TO247 package to get the uh, uh, pin uh, spacing and stuff like that. Worldwide best RDS on ultra low gate charge, everything else, fantastic. But look at that, they're, they're mounted onto a large heat sink there with uh, that sort of greenish kind of stuff is going to be um, some thermal, uh, thermal adhesive uh, pad kind of thing. Because oh, look, there's no screws actually uh, bolting these things on. So they're just basically uh, stuck onto there and <laughs> it's just imploded. I love it. Look at these solder joints down the bottom here, by the way. Take a squeeze at those. There's no uh, solder fillets coming up through the bottom side. So I don't like that. That's a bit how you're doing. Because if you want uh, current to pass from the solder joint on the bottom side to the top side, where you can see the traces going off here on the top side, then, hey, it's got to go all through the thin walls and over the edges of the uh, of that pad there. So, yeah, that's not too terrific. We're going to fill it over there. But... Yeah, but that's not the reason for the failure. So that must have been a gross overload. So if you have it actually have a look at this thing, here we go, IF Max. It'll do a non-repetitive peak forward current. Non-repetitive, of course, means it's just like a one-off shot because you don't want to do it again and again and again because then the average heat will uh, be too high and it will uh, <gasps> release the magic smoke like we've seen here. But for 10 microseconds, hey, it'll handle 60 amps, no worries whatsoever. So there you go. And there's the uh, I squared T value. So yeah, I think what went wrong there is we had too many amps for too much time. And there's your thermal characteristics for those playing along at home. And that's the end result. Oops. And as everyone knows, the active ingredient in all components is the magic smoke. Once it escapes, they don't work anymore. Bugger to put back in too. Oh man, it's tricky. Let me tell you, even with the tongue at the right angle. But you can actually buy Magic Smoke uh, refill cans from IBM. They used to sell it back in the 70s. There's the manufacturing date, 576. Uh, but you can't buy it anymore. And just one more for our first episode. Thank you very much, Mark Brennan. Uh, he was repairing this uh, Tektronix 2465. And check it out. You don't see this very often. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's an X uh, class cap, X2 class cap, like fully rated, like proper one. Look at all the ratings on there and it has just 
burst in half. Look at that. The Magic Smoke has definitely escaped from that. I mean, these are mains rated proper caps. They've got self-healing uh, properties in them, and these are designed for this sort of application. So whether or not it was just age or whether or not it was just a gross surge, um, you can actually see down the bottom here, you can actually see a spark gap. Um, that's what that uh, metal can uh, there is. So that's actually, um, maybe it died, uh, did its job and stopped some of the trans here, but there doesn't seem to be anything else uh, damaged there. But wow, I've never seen one of those X-Class caps uh, just had the guts spewed out of it and the magic smoke like that escaped before. Those things are usually pretty darn good caps. And if you don't know about uh, X-Class capacitors, I'm sure I've done a video on it somewhere, they are the ones designed to connect directly across the active and neutral of uh, the mains for uh, filtering applications. Uh, the, w there's also uh, Y-Class caps which are designed to go between active or neutral and earth. But uh, these X-Class caps directly across active and neutral, so any surge on your mains power line is going to be directly across these uh, X-Class caps, so oops. So I hope you enjoyed that short news segment. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you think it's just a waste of time and it's boring as bat poo, give it a thumbs down or leave your comments and go meh if you want to see it on a separate channel or something like that, i.e. you love this sort of stuff and you only want to subscribe to this sort of stuff. I don't know, maybe I can do that too, but anyway, that's the first EEV smoke segment. I thought it'd just be fun to showcase stuff. So if you do have anything to uh, send in, it must be naturally escaped smoke. None of this bullshit about, you know, hooking, deliberately hooking mains up and destroying, frying leads and stuff like that. None of that rubbish. No, we want naturally escaped uh, smoke with good close-ups like this one. Um, spectacular fails. Thank you to everyone on Twitter who actually sent in uh, some stuff and I've got some more good photos. I didn't want this to go for 10 minutes. Probably already gone too long already. Oh use those in the next uh, segment. So send your high-res photos into evplussmoke at gmail.com. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time.